Good morning, everyone. Hi. <laughs> we have got a full house today. Um, <clears throat> good morning. Welcome to <laughs> welcome to University Universalist Unitarian Church. <laughs> My name is Michelle Flores. I will be your service leader for today. Um, today's music is also going to be led by Stephanie Messler. Yay. All right, so um, <clears throat> I just want to welcome everybody into this shared sacred space. Um, this is also a great time to remind everybody to turn their cell phones off or devices onto silence or vibrate. Um, I think we're, we're about ready to move right into committee moments. So if you have an announcement with the, you know, it's part of the committee moments, come right up onto the mic. Oh, oh, that's loud. Um, Ann Patrick, Ann Packham, <laughs> Vice uh, President of the Board. Um, just wanted to let everybody know that our quarterly meeting will be August 28th, so it's a little bit later than we would normally have our quarterly meeting because we have an event on the 21st. So just mark your calendars. It'll be short, um, just catching you up on the business of the day, and the meeting minutes from last quarter's meeting, last quarter will go out in an email soon. Um, and then the women's group, we haven't 100% firmed anything up. I haven't reached Roberta because I haven't called her, but I think we'll be meeting the last Friday of the month. So if you don't know what the women's group is, see me after and I'll sign you up. Good morning. Me. Lorraine Williams speaking for the pastoral care committee meeting. Um, group, whatever. <laughs> and we're on the same page. Um, <laughs> Uh, the, we're not having the quarterly meeting on the 21st because pastoral care, because of Roy's input, it has the ADRC, the Alzheimer's Dementia Resource Center, speaking here for Sunday service, and there's going to be a lunch and learn afterwards. For the lunch and learn, we would like a head count because we're going to get, get lunch. Um, so uh, the marketing committee has created a Facebook link that you can sign up through Facebook to be uh, attend the meeting. Also, if you would rather just give me your name, I'll keep a clipboard and write it down. But we're looking forward to it, and we're hoping that it's not just for our community. It's for your friends, your family, whoever you think might could benefit by this kind of information. Thank you. Hi, Chloe McElroy. Um, I am here representing the Millennial Plus group. Um, we will be meeting on August 19th here at the church. As far as I know, I need to double check, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be here at the church. Um, and uh, if you're not part of our Facebook group, you're welcome to come find me. I'm literally always in the back. Um, and uh, so our Millennial group is get open to anybody who's 21 and up who identifies as a Millennial or Gen X, are you mouthing something to me? Okay, no, I'm sorry, Judith was looking at me and I wasn't sure if she was saying something to me or not. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you um, want any more information about Millennial Group, please come find me. Um, we're hoping to actually branch out from the church, but since we're starting again after being off for quarantine and the summer, um, I'm just trying to restart it with a home base and then we'll start figuring out what all we wanna do. Anyway, thank you. So good morning, Kelly Buchanan, marketing chair. What a lovely, lovely group this morning. But I wanted just to add to what Lorraine uh, was speaking of. We do have some ADRC pamphlets and flyers right on the front, uh, the credenza here. So if you're interested, please pick one of these up on your way out. Also, just wanted to kind of inform everybody about what the marketing group has been doing. Just a couple of things. We have a, we've really reached a, a, a very important milestone. We actually are scheduled and have secured two spots at the UCF marketing days. So which means that our Reverend Tracy, along with uh, volunteers from our congregation, will be at the church uh, to really increase awareness that we are right here uh, close uh, to UCF. So this is something we've been wanting to do for 10 years. 
uh, if not longer. So I really am just so thankful. Uh, do what? Yes, we'll be at the school. I think it's in the student union area. It's going to be on Wednesdays. Uh, and we're going to be there. The, it's going to be September the 21st and October the 5th. So as a nonprofit, we can be there twice. And this is the first time that I've been here for, I'm a member for 15 years, and this is the first time that we've done something like this. And this is big, so we're really yeah. excited to have presence on campus. Yeah. Um, also want to say that a couple things coming up. One is that we have an online shopping tab coming soon. More information about that at the quarterly meeting. Um, and I think that's really about it. Just one last reminder. If you're visiting us for the first time and you want to know who we are and what we do, what we what do Unitarians believe, it's right up front. Pick one up on your way out. Again, it's very detailed for visitors like Zane. I think you're, you're new. Yeah. Uh, and last thing I want to say on behalf of the Congregational Read, our book club will be starting August the 23rd. The book that we're going to be reading is called An Indig Indigenous People's History of the United States. This is a history about indigenous people from their perspective. So this will be a, a, our book club. It'll be online, it'll be Zoom. The format, we're gonna be reading aloud. We're gonna try that. Uh, so if you're interested, please let me know and I'll get this information to you. Thank you. Good morning, Barry London. Uh, and I'm before you as uh, head of the rental committee here at the Unitarian Church and and uh, for those of you who did not know we had to uh, renew uh, create a new lease for the RE building and that lease was with a tenant by the name of able academics however the third party to that lease the county did not agree with the special exception that was necessary and so we had to jump through a hoop and accomplish a special exception once again. And that was achieved on Friday. And we now have the special exception. And that tenant is firmly in place. Good morning. Margie Bolak with membership. Um, it's wonderful to see so many new people. Yay. And what a crowd. Um, we are going to have, um, on the 28th of August, will be the Pathway to Membership meeting. Uh, some of you have already attended UU 101s. This is the next meeting before, uh, if you were interested in joining. And that will be back in the library. Um, then we'll have, on the 11th of September, our water ceremony, where we bring in and welcome our new members. Um, the weekend, the Sunday after that, we'll do, we will do UU 101 for, for new visitors. Um, so uh, that's all I've got for you. Thanks. Okay, so hi, Chloe McElroy again. Um, I, as a millennial, my schedule is all over the place, and thus, I forgot that I had something scheduled on the 19th. So actually, we're going to be meeting on August 26th. Hopefully here at the church, I gotta double check with Teresa. Um, at 6.30, it'll be a potluck. Anyone 21 and up that um, feels uh, cold to the Millennial Plus group, we welcome Gen Xers as well because we know they are the forgotten generation. We love you, all right? Uh, the 26th, 6.30, hopefully here. Come find me if you need any more information. Thank you. Ray Brammer Wilson. I feel like I'm a stranger here in my own, my own group. I've been gone so long. Um, I'm also a membership, and I want to let everybody know that we need greeters through August and September. I have a makeshift sign-up sheet. <laughs> if you would see me afterwards, I'd love to have you be a greeter, and this is a wonderful way to meet people. Also, um, if you intend to be joining our congregation on the, what day is the water ceremony? The, okay, the 11th. Oh, it keeps falling. I'm a loud mouth, but I thought, you know. Um, we need to know that you want to be joining so that we have all your information 
And uh, so get with Margie on that before that date, before the pathway to membership on the 28th. Thank you. I'm spacey today. <laughs> So, with that, my opening words. So, um, I'm a little bit nervous this morning, so I'm going to try and shake off those nerves. It's my first time being service leader, so thank you for letting me do that. All right, so I, I want to start by saying there are so many quotes about new beginnings and change, and yet none of them felt quite right for me while I was kind of writing this. So, this morning's words are my own. And today is the blessing of the backpacks, which is a big deal in our church. It's one way that we show our students and others in our congregation that we support them as they return to school um, or move on to like whatever comes next for them. And when I saw that Reverend Tracy was gonna be talking about new beginnings today, I was reminded of so many of my own new beginnings over the years, and there have been a lot of them. Um, so today, whether you're going to a new school, returning to school that you already know, or maybe you haven't even thought about school in years, <laughs> um, or maybe you have like some other change going on in your life, I just encourage you um, to reflect on Reverend Tracy's words today and each of our own new beginnings. And personally, I know that like change can be really scary, um, but it can also be absolutely amazing. And my own experience has taught me that the changes that scared me the most were usually the ones that were absolutely the most rewarding. So with that, we will move on to opening music led by Stephanie Messler. Morning. Um, our first hymn is Just As Long As I Have Breath, which was written by Alicia Carpenter. Alicia was a longtime uh, composer for the several UU hymnals that are out there. So you've probably heard her songs before. You've probably sung them before. I hope you've sung this one before I was told you have. <laughs> was that true? Yeah, yeah, we will. Okay, um, Alicia died. She is well known among UU musicians for having um, premiered an original work at General Convention in 2011, and uh, she died last year. So uh, we sing this pretty, you know, taking the words. It was, she wrote it a long time ago, but it really works <laughs> right now, having just lost her. All right, we have accompaniment that was recorded by some organist who remains lame, nameless <laughs> with the UUA. Um, and they put it on the UUA website so that we could use it. Now, there are some problems with the recording. The big one is that there's no intro. So we come in when it comes in. So if you get lost, I might be lost with you, but I'll try not to be. <laughs> and uh, we'll all sing to get, get back together somehow. Just watch me. I'll flail my arms or something to try to get us back where we belong. Um, and it's an organ which tells me it was probably recorded like first UU Boston or Concord, one of those old time UU churches that used to be Presbyterian way back, and, or maybe Episcopalian in some cases. And so it's a big organ and it's a little hard to hear some of the notes. So we've turned it up a little. So I think that'll help. All right, you ready? I know I made that sound like lots of fun, didn't I? <laughs> Sing joyfully. <laughs> okay. Just as long as I have breath, I will stand sir, yes to life. Though with pain I made my way, still with hope I meet each day. Yes, to true. 
is we invite uh, one of our youth to come up. And today's chalice lighter is Anike. Anike, sorry, I know your name. <laughs> Anike is five and she is excited. Her pronouns are she, her. And she is excited to be starting kindergarten. Yay! In unison, in the light of truth and the warmth of love, we gather to seek, to sustain, and to share. And the affirmation, love is the spirit of this church and service is its gift. And this is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek truth and love, and to help one another. Um, this morning, I want to make sure that we welcome many of our guests, both online and here in person. As it's been mentioned a couple of times, we see a lot of new faces, and that's fantastic. So welcome. Um, our congregation is a place where you can put down roots and simultaneously spread your wings. We are a group that holds shared values and principles um, with very diverse beliefs. So welcome. With that, uh, we'll move on to joys and concerns. And this is a time where the congregation can come up and has an opportunity to share the joys and also the concerns in their life because we find that celebrating joys together is a great thing and sharing our burdens with others help lighten the load. I will also invite everyone to drop a stone into the water uh, after you share your joy or concern with us. Margie again. Excuse the painted shorts. My best friend uh, is visiting me. She came up uh, Thursday evening from St. Louis, Pam, and she, to help me uh, with back in the back painting with the kids. Anyway, it's wonderful to have Pam here. She has to go home tonight, but Pam is uh, magical. She's got a lot of talents, but put her in front of a room of kids and give her a storybook and it is such an experience. She is the best storyteller I've ever listened to. Yeah. yeah. When I'm done with UCF, I'm going to Levy School. At UCP. Yeah, so everybody knows that school is starting, everything's doing great, you're going to different grades. Some people are going to college, so I want to thank, um, uh, I want to give a good luck to all the people who are going to college, and um, uh, I hope you do good <laughs> and get a job. Um, I have a joy and concern. I am Anastasia Paris. My concern is um, there was a leak from our um, downstairs. It's under my mom's bathroom, so we don't know what's causing it. And I have a joy that I get, a get to get away from my siblings at school. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
Ray Brammer Wilson. I hate to follow kids, they're so wonderful. Um, my, I have a lot of joys and a lot of concerns. My joys, I had two of our grandchildren last week. Um, we had spent four weeks up in the mountains and came back just for those kids. I had a birthday and got nothing but bad news about health. But um, I have macular degeneration now in both eyes. Isn't that lovely? But um, it's going to be okay. I'm, that's my joy is that it's going to be okay. I'm going to make it okay. have to have a shot for my uh, shoulder and my hip. So I'm just, it's all going to be okay. <laughs> And we go back up to the mountains again next week for another four weeks, and I get to have four grandchildren there. Yeah. And my concern is one of our daughters um, has been so sick. They did emergency surgery in Colorado while I had her, grand her children here. And um, it may not be over. Her, her pancre pancreas has got a problem. She's only 38. Keep her in your thoughts. It may be a uh, autoimmune disease, and they're just not a, because she travels to all these other countries because she's a public. She's a what is she? PhD, public health nurse who does emergency management around the world. So mm -hmm. she, they think she contracted something in one of these third world countries, and she's fighting. Thank you, but it's going to be all good. <laughs> Hi, um, Kelly and I this past weekend did something we've never done before, which is attend a black uh, wedding. So we got to see a jumping of the broom. I always read about it, but. And then uh, mixing of the sands is another ceremony that I had never seen before. So thanks. That's cool. Hi, Chloe Hatfield. Um, I have a joy that's also kind of a concern because it's a bit bittersweet. Um, I'm closing a chapter in my life um, for now. It might open back up another day, but I am closing my chapter of teaching. I have been accepted to uh, a company that does private investigation where I can work from home. It's bittersweet because I do love working with children and I also don't know how I'm going to relate this to my boss tomorrow because <laughs> it's the start of school. So I was like, hey, yeah, we're starting. Bye. <laughs> um, but I feel like this is the best choice for me right now on my path because of the flexibility it gives me to work at home and within the near future possibly move um, and for my health as well because I'm sorry, but kids get me sick. <laughs> I'm Ann Packham. I have two joys and a concern. Um, well, one joy is that Happy Amin let me know that her mom has been in the hospital with COVID um, for several weeks, but she's now moving to rehab, so that's an improvement. Um, and speaking of people working with kids, we have um, a neighborhood um, person who's been living in our house, a, a young woman that we um, that moved in in May, and um, Friday night we took her out for dinner because she's also leaving her job at a daycare center um, so that she can focus on her studies. And she said having moved in with us gave her the flexibility to not work for the first time, full time, in several years. So that made me feel happy for her. Um, the concern I want to share is from Trista Hall. She um, let us know yesterday that her dad uh, had to go to the hospital. He has COVID. Um, he has been admitted overnight, but that the concern is not the COVID. There's something else, but they don't know what it is yet. So. Um, please keep her in your thoughts. Hi, y'all. I'm Stephanie. And I have two things that I wanted to say this morning. One is that I have a concern about my health. Um, I really feel like crap. I'm just going to put that out there. And I have lumps pretty much everywhere. So I'm having some tests done, the first of which is tomorrow. And... Uh, I'm scared. So I just wanted to share because it may make me a little unreliable, but it is what it is and it'll be okay. So that's it. My second thing is both a joy and a concern or a concern and a joy in that order, I guess. Um, in 1997, I was pregnant and I 
by the end of that month knew for sure I was pregnant and blood test and everything. And I joined immediately this pregnancy group online called October 1997, because that's when I was due. And it was a group of women from all around the world. And uh, we have become like sisters over the years. We go to one another's weddings, support each other through divorces and deaths and children having issues and husbands being idiots and uh, all kinds of stuff. Um, and we have been there for the joys too. One of our own, Eleni, died on Thursday. Um, she had, she's fought an over a decade long battle with cancer. And she has, he previously every time has just kind of sailed through treatment, kept on teaching, kept on living. This last time we heard from her about two weeks ago saying this will be it. I don't have the energy left to even talk to anybody. And the next thing you hear will not be coming from my chest. Um, the next thing you hear from me will probably be after I'm gone. And it was. But I think about her being free and out of that body. And uh, that makes me feel a lot of joy for her because that is all over. Of course, her family is still our deep concern. So anyway, that's it for me. <laughs> Um, hi, um, I'm Susie. Um, I have a joy and a concern. Um, in a couple weeks or a week, I, time isn't real, um, I'll be starting my last semester of undergrad. And yes, this is my seventh year of a four-year degree. I'm 24. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, between COVID and family emergencies, all that stuff. So um, I will be finishing up with two more classes. I'll be finishing up my um, bachelor's in English, and then I will probably start looking into grad school because I am never leaving academia. They will not get rid of me. <laughs> uh, hi, uh, I'm Remus Carr. Uh, uh, with the coming school year, this is kind of a joy and a concern. Marching season starts. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm in marching band. Uh, which means I don't get a lot of sleep. Um, so that's gonna be fun. Also, I've just been thrown into two long summer assignments that I didn't know I was gonna have to do until this week. Um, so that's, that's been fun. Hi, I'm Amanda. Um, I'm new here, I've been a few times. Uh, really love it, but. There's been a lot of changes in my life lately. Tomorrow, I start a new job. Um, I've been staying at home with my daughter for the last three plus years. So going back to work is scary and exciting to be away from her um, and not hear mama every five seconds. So um, yeah, that's a joy and a concern because I'm gonna miss her like crazy, but really happy to be away from her. So. <laughs> Hi everyone, um, I'm Zane, this is my first time, and I'm not sure really how this works, so forgive me if I, don't, if I say something wrong. Um, I, I, I'm, my first joy is that I'm writing a book, I'm, you know, I don't care, uh, originally I was doing game development, but I switched to creative writing, so I, I love storytelling for kids, and I'm choosing to, you know, believe in God, and even if I'm homeless someday, uh, um, you know, uh, at least I did my passion, which is writing a book, and that's why I did, came here. So that's why religion is based off my book, and I'm so happy to meet all of you guys because you guys are great. You know, you're diverse, you don't care, and it's exciting. You know, uh, but to be honest with all of you, I am uh, very concerned because uh, my family, friends, and church have all warned me and told me several times that this place is the devil, that this is going to be evil, this is going to be awful, I will become converted. Uh, so it is terrifying and scary, you know, challenging your beliefs, but you guys are all great and nice, and, you know, I respect all of your guys' beliefs, so I hope you can bear with me. Right. Welcome. So I just want to invite us all to take a moment to reflect on the joys and concerns shared here today and also 
hold a little space for those not spoken. So, uh, our Director of Religious Education, RE, uh, Ms. Judith Sign Farrell, will do Time for All Ages. I'll do Time for All Ages. Good morning. My name is Judith Stein Farrell. For all of the new people here, I am the Director of Religious Education, in case you didn't know that. Um, and tomorrow, or this week, begins. What happens this week? Something important happens this week. Anna! Sorry, what? Beach day tomorrow, maybe. Okay. Um, Ender, what's happening this week? School starts. Oh. School starts. Yay! Yay! Karen says yay. How do we all feel about school? Okay, I'm seeing a few yays. Who's excited about school? Ooh. Ooh. Is it going to be a different year, kind of year this year than it was last year? Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. How's it going to be different? Less COVID, fewer masks, different grade. Le Levy said was saying that earlier. We're all moving on to new grades and new classrooms. What, less Zoom for some. For all of y'all out there, you may be doing stuff in classrooms in, in Zoom or something like that, right? Anybody else? What do you take with you when you go to school? Uh, Anna. Sorry, Anna. Textbooks. I'm, okay, Ethan. Backpacks. Who else? Uh, 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 is that Libby? Yes. School supplies, Finn. Lunchbox, which I was also hearing up here. Ender. Phone. Phone. <laughs> Miak's hands being held up by Kelly. Yes, Miak. Your brain. Your brain. <laughs> So, so just out of curiosity, who's who's going to school? The, the starting school this week or in the in the next month or so? Woo! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There are at least fifteen people. Do you know what? Do y'all know? Okay, okay, you can put your hands down now. Do y'all know? And and some of them were adults and some were kids. Do you all know that our Reverend Tracy is also in school? Yeah. yeah. Reverend Tracy, can you come up for a moment? You go to school and you take a backpack just like our kids. Yep. Yep. She needs a look at this. What, what is in your backpack? It's heavy. It's, <laughs> it's heavy. Yeah, it's heavy and it's usually heavier um, because I have to travel for school. So. <coughs> I have my headphones because I have to travel. I have to get on a plane to go to school. And a hand sanitizer. And let's see. My masks. Um, a because, silicone straw. Because last year she got COVID at school. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> masks. Again. Um, I carry a stapler. You never know when you need to staple things. Um, I have a fidget toy because I have ADHD. So the fidget toy is helpful. I have my water. Yeah, always have to have that. And, you know, and there I also have my phone. <laughs> <laughs> but this is for all my Gen X 80s oh, kids. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so satisfying. I do carry a trapper keeper to my doctoral program. <laughs> um, you know, a notebook. And I carry my laptop with me because yeah. I have to have that too. Is there anything you mi she missed that needs to go to school? What? Pen? Yeah. Yeah. No. And what? Wait, before she pulls it out, look at Reverend Tracy. What color pen does she wear, carry? Purple. <laughs> Purple pen. 
I'll wait for a phone call. All right. Well, because I'm in, I get to stay in the hotel, so we have class in the hotel, so I don't have to worry about an umbrella. Mm -mm. I'm from She's Florida. stuck in. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so there, um, these are all tangible, right? Mm -hmm. Touchable things. Mm -hmm. Yep. That we carry with us to school and some of us to work. Some of us are starting new jobs or a new school year. We've got some teachers in the room, right? And some online. There's something else our children need and our teachers need and our administrative people need and the people who are starting new jobs need. What is that? They need our support. And they need to know that there are friends and family and community to help them. How do you know they need this? Because I need it. <laughs> so how can I help you and you to know that you have our support? You can tell me, and you can give me something to remind me. Okay. And that's what we're going to do today. Um, a blessing, oh, and that's something, and this is something we have done for the last six years. This is starting the seventh time. Mm. A blessing is a bestowment of a gift, the assurance that a person has the support of another. Today, we as a congregation here and online, y'all up there, will reach out with our hearts and with our souls through the words that we're going to say and the deed of participating in this to demonstrate to our students and our teachers and all the others starting new beginnings, new adventures, that we know that this will be a transformative year that's the key word, a transformative year. A year of learning and growth and change and beginnings. All of you who would like to be, I'm going to give you instructions first, so don't get up when I tell you this. <laughs> I'll bring you up in a moment. But all of you who would like to be blessed and have your backpack blessed, if you brought one with you, but you don't have to. It can be done through your soul, right? Um, I'm going to ask you to join us in the front of the room. And then what's going to happen is after we have everybody gathered up here, Reverend Tracy and I are going to alternate reading the blessing. And each time we say a sentence, you all are going to repeat it because all, the rest of the congregation is going to repeat it to those being blessed. As you're saying the words, I want you to imagine yourself imbuing these statements on these this year's key backpack tag that is going to be hung around their bags, on their bulleted boards, wherever they hold these things on their key ring. And um, where'd, where'd my note go? <laughs> Probably on the, okay. Um, okay. Okay, all right. Oh, okay, there you are. Thank you. So when we're done with, after we've done the blessing, then you can come parade through and take your, and I'll, I'll put it over here. Maybe Lorraine will help me at that point, and, and hand you your tag. So first you're going to come up, you're going to receive your blessing, and then you're going to take one of these from Lorraine, who will hand them off to you. Does that sound good? All right, would everyone who has a backpack or starting a school year or starting a new thing come up and line up in front of the congregation that is willing to be here? Yes, in an orderly fashion, no runnings. Orderly fashion, yes. <laughs> Students. Yeah, just face the room. Yeah, face them, don't face me. Before you leave, I have a book. You can spread out some too. Be mindful of the camera. There we go. That's why I backed it up a little. Wow. Oh, good. Everyone that's taking pictures, especially Kelly, would you send one to me so that I can add it to the RE News? Scoot Jean a little bit, y'all. Face, face that way. Face that way, Uriah. All right. 
Careful. No, I moved it. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> oh, it's a bowling ball would be really useful right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, look towards Miss Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. All right, stay right there. And remember, you're going to repeat after me and, and Reverend Tracy. We members and friends, we members and friends of University Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Orlando. Of University Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Orlando. Bless you, students, teachers, and administrators. Bless you, students, teachers, and administrators. And beginners of all endeavors. And beginners of all endeavors. We bless you. We bless you. And we bless the shields you carry and wear. And we bless the shields you carry and wear. Your book bags, backpacks, computers. Your book bags, backpacks, computers. And your masks and your glasses. And your masks and your glasses. We bless the vehicles that transport you. We bless the vehicles that transport you. We bless you with our compassion for the difficult days that are bound to happen. We bless you with our compassion for the difficult days that are bound to happen. We bless you with our cheers. We bless you with our cheers. For all the successes we know you will have. For all the successes we know you will have. We want you to know. We want you to know. That where you go. That where you go. Within our hearts and souls. Within our hearts and souls. We are there for you. We are there for you. As you start this transformative year. As you start this transformative year. We at Triple U. We at Triple U. Send you with the love and support of our blessing. Send you with the love and support of our blessing. Amen, Amen and, and blessed, blessed be. be. Amen and blessed be. Thank you. Now, if you will walk one at a time, pass this mic to Lorraine. She will hand you your black backpack blessing tag. One a piece. This is my purse. It's perfect. It's the most mom friendly thing in I the world. I love it. <laughs> While our kids are uh, walk and adults are walking through, starting their new endeavors and their new school years and all, I want you to know that in RE to this morning, Margie, uh, Margie, 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 yeah, I know, I'm sorry. Uh, Margie uh, came in and did a lesson on dot painting. It was probably one of the most successful lessons we've had this summer. It was awesome. If thank you all. Yeah, I think so. After the offering. Sorry. Yeah, see? Chloe, Chloe's on it. All right. <laughs> now it's time for our interlude and offering. And I believe Stephanie is, is, Stephanie, are you doing the music for interlude and offering? No, it's, a, it's part of the cold Got it. <laughs> cool. Um, I would also like to mention while the music is playing and the interlude and offering is taking place that 40% of the uh, loose plate offering today is shared with a charitable organization and um, 
This month it is Orlando Center for Justice. Thank you to all our youth helping with that this morning. So this is the time where we sing our children out back to um, RE where they will finish up. Supervised free time. <clears throat> We love you and bless you and send you on your way. We love you and bless you today and every day. All right. And now it's time for the main part of the day. Reverend Tracy. what grad school has done to me, is needing reading glasses. So I love when school supplies come out in the stores. The way some people look at Christmas decorations or other holiday decorations, I look at school supplies. I will wander through that area even though I don't have kids, mesmerized by all the colors of the various notebooks and folders and pens and pencils and I check out what cool new things there are for giving me the illusion of organization. <laughs> I will sometimes pick up folders and pens or notebooks even though I don't really need them, but come on, we all need them, right? So it's the start of a new year. I'm sure officially the new year starts in January on the calendar, but for me, the new year really starts at this time of year when the calendar, if not the weather, begins to quiet and turn inward. This time of year bristles with possibilities. It's the start of a new school year everywhere from preschool to postgraduate work. It's a new start for students, parents, teachers, and everyone who knows them. Possibilities. To me, that's what new beginnings are really all about, the possibilities. When we open a new notebook to a pristine sheet of paper, there are so many possibilities. Will we use the notebook for jotting down ideas, journaling our thoughts, writing the next great novel or short story or sermon, taking notes of our day-to-day -day activities, doodling? There's so many possibilities of what we could do. For our students and teachers, it's a time of new possibilities too. Our students will get a chance to learn new things, meet new people in their classes, and grow as they encounter new ways of thinking and being. Our teachers of all ages and stages get new students to not only teach and impact, but also to learn from. And I have to say, that's one of the things I miss most about school, the great reset of people who I got to encounter every year. New classes, new students, it always kept things exciting and fresh. And yes, I return to school in a few weeks as well. And there'll be one new student joining our focus group, so we really only get a little bit of a reset. But it, we do get one, it's just different. 
we gather and we'll learn about new church placements, a new home, new relationships, new children, new grandchildren, etc. It's a chance for new beginnings in our cohort as well. We'll learn how to interact with our new cohort member, and they will learn how to interact with us. And there'll be new ways that we interact with one another as a large group of us who all started together prepare for candidacy. We'll learn how to interact as the majority of my cohort members are United Methodist, and that denomination is working through a split right now. There are cohort members on both sides of that widening divide, and I don't know how it will affect the friendships that we've developed. So we come back together in a few weeks with fresh eyes. Isn't that too what new beginnings are all about? It's not always about the new people or new things that can be seen as exciting and fresh and rife with possibilities. It's also about the natural shifts and changes that happen between those of us who have been around and together since the beginning, whether we notice it or not. Those relationships too need a little bit of newness infused into them. It's easy when we've been around one another for a long time to just well, get used to each other. But if we don't tend to these relationships, we don't notice how things might have shifted. Now, when I first wrote down the title for this sermon, I immediately had a line from a semisonic song stuck in my head. Every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. And to those of you who are nodding, you're welcome. That's your earworm for today. <laughs> Been in my head for a month. And I've always had mixed feelings about this lyric because on one hand, it's kind of sad, reminding us that new beginnings come because something else has ended. And yet there are possibilities there too. Endings are not always sad. Some endings are really good, like the end of conflict, the end of fighting, the end of misunderstandings and misinterpretations. Those endings are really good and they provide for new beginnings. In the case of my cohort members who are facing the end of their denomination as they know it, there are new beginnings. The opportunity to be clear about one's position and principles. The opportunity to stop fighting over the same. The opportunity for harm to cease. And the opportunity to grow and flourish. It doesn't make it easy, far from it. But it does mean that there are possibilities lurking in the shadows of the pain that has been present. In this time of new beginnings, it's not just school that starts anew. Across a lot of denominations, this is also the start of the church year. New ministries begin in August. Existing ministries are often renewed. The religious education department prepares to start the new year with new curriculum. In Unitarian Universalism, we often have an in-gathering service where everyone returns from summer travels or various other trips. And this is usually the annual water ceremony in many congregations, and we'll do that in September. And it's also when we welcome new members. So it's a time for us, too, to look at new beginnings and possibilities. What better time to look through our relationships here with one another? It's a time to ask yourself, have I intentionally or unintentionally caused harm to someone here I'm in covenant with? A sharp word, a slight a misunderstanding or miscommunication, whatever it is, even if you don't understand it, you, all of these have the potential to create conflict. And for Unitarian Universalists, we know that ending conflict is not easy. Our covenantal faith compels us to return again and again to the table to work out our conflicts. And we do that by coming to each other when there has been a conflict or harm and saying, I'm sorry for what part I have played in this. I want to repair our covenant and our relationship. Can we talk? And then we listen, really listen, hear what is happening and find out why it happened. What's the story behind the story? I recently read the book High Conflict, Why We Get Trapped and How We Get Out by Amanda Ripley. In it, she tells the story about a lawyer who developed a way to work through mediation for divorcing clients. And the lawyer described when he discovered that a fight wasn't actually over a crockpot. It was over what the crockpot represented. For the wife, it was a reminder of home-cooked meals that her mother had made, which is why she registered for a crockpot just like her mother's. For the husband, since they never used it, it was just another appliance. Turns out the crockpot represented the potential 
for home-cooked meals, shared together at the table. But it was not the reality, which is what made the conflict seem so very high stakes, because the stakes really were that high. It just wasn't about the, co the crock pot. It was about what happened in the relationship. So it is with many conflicts. It may seem like it's one thing, but more often than not, it's about something deeper. Coming back to the table to work on that, to dig deep and find out what the deeper thing is, allows us the chance to repair the actual hurt. Depending on how deep that hurt is, the healing may take a while. And it may take a lot of little endings and beginnings. And that's okay. Every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. We may repair a conflict just to find a few months later something else sets it off again. And it doesn't mean we failed before. It may mean we didn't get down to the core of what really caused the conflict the first time. We have to be willing to be open, to be vulnerable, to really ask what the conflict is about. Sometimes we don't even know what the conflict is about. Sometimes the deeper thing is that we are reacting to a conflict in a way that we learned a long time ago instead of responding to what is happening in the present. I don't know about you, but I do this. Granted, thanks to therapy, I'm catching it more often before it blows up. And a regular conversation in our home right now is, hey, just a heads up, I'm having a reaction to the thing you just did or said or whatever, and I know it's not you. This is completely a reaction to a past trigger. I see it as that, and I'm working on it, and I wanted you to know why I'm acting weird. And that seems odd, I'm sure. Richard's still getting used to me saying that. He always looks at me like, okay, <laughs> thank you for sharing. And yet I can see how much it's helping our relationship because I'm not replaying roles I've been in my entire life. I'm stopping it when I see it and it gives me a chance to pause and take a breath. And it makes sure that if we do have a conflict, it's actually about us and not about something deeper and older. And I can honestly say that before I learned to recognize this, these things in me, I would react to the stimulus as if it were the past. And that's not good for anyone. So what do we do when we're facing a conflict that we want to end? We listen. We become vulnerable and open. We figure out what the cause of the conflict is within ourselves. And we become willing to try again and again and again. That's the beauty of this covenantal faith. Every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end, and those can happen over and over and over again as we renew our covenant with one another over and over and over again. As Rumi says, though you've broken your vows a thousand times, come, yet again come. That, my friends, is the beauty of new beginnings. They can happen multiple times, not just this time of year, so may we embrace the potential and the possibilities of new beginnings in what we do, in how we interact, and how we deal with conflict. Amen. Blessed be, and may it be so. Thank you. So at this time, uh, we will extinguish the chalice. Will you join me in the words on the screen? We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. <clears throat> and now for our closing music. Stephanie will lead us in the hymn. Um, love will guide us. I'm sure you've all sung this one before. We all know this. Um, it's written by Sally Rogers, who is still alive and kicking and performing. Uh, she's on Facebook. There she is. And she does sometimes video concerts on Facebook. So if you want to look her up, um, she's there. She's primarily a folk singer. Um, her first album came out in 1981. And I remember that because I was teaching preschool at the time, and it was a preschool album. And uh, she was at, she's at the Morristown UU um, as a member, an occasional performer. And uh, she's been there for a long time. So love will guide us. Rise.
You will not die. <laughs> Love will guide us, peace has tried us, hope inside us will lead the way on the road from greed to giving. Love will guide us through the hard night. If you cannot like angels if you cannot speak before thousands you can give from deep within you you can change the world with your love love will guide us peace has taught us inside us will lead the way on the road from greed to giving love will guide us through the hard night good job For our closing words, um, the quote from Lao Tzu that says, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, just kind of reminds me to um, continue moving forward as we go into new beginnings and that um, just making, taking that step and continuing to move forward is how we get through those new beginnings. So let's all continue our journeys with a single step as we part ways today and uh, feel free to mingle and have some conversation, some coffee. And yeah, and there's some snacks in the back as well. So thank you for being here today. <laughs>